First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. He's number 11. He's got 1% in the polls. And how he got up here, there's far too many people. Anyway, I never attacked him on his look. And believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. Your brother you and your brother's administration gave us Barack Obama because it was such a disaster those last three months that Abraham Lincoln couldn't have been elected. You know what? As it relates to my brother, there's one thing I know for sure. He kept us safe. I don't know if you remember Donald. You remember the the rubble? You remember the firefighter with his arms around it? He sent a clear signal that the United States would be strong and fight Islamic terrorism, and he did keep us safe. I don't know. You feel safe right now? I don't feel so safe. Welcome back to the World Over Live. That was the front runner, Donald Trump, jabbing his opponents during last night's televised debate. Joining me to discuss the debate, defunding Planned Parenthood, and the Iran deal, and much more, is senior political columnist for the Washington Examiner, Tim Carney, and U.S. Congressman from the First District of Nebraska, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry. Thank you both for being here. Nice to you. Thank Let's you. start with Trump. I mean, he was out there jabbing away. Uh, he got some licks in. There was some wounds delivered to him, no doubt. Did he survive, and will this make any difference, Tim Carney? Well, Trump is making the biggest difference in the race, mostly because the rounds he's winning are against Jeb Bush, who otherwise was the frontrunner and would be the frontrunner. So I think he beat Jeb Bush in, in, on points last night, but he lost to Carly Fiorina. And so that both provides Fiorina with an opportunity. It catapults her into the spotlight. The next couple polls, she's going to be in the top three, if not, in the, if not in the top two there. But Jeb Bush getting taken down a lot. So even if Trump flames out in the long run, like a lot of us think he might, he could have a lasting impact of taking out Jeb. And last night was a perfect example of why. Uh, Congressman Fortenberry, have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, this guy comes out after the, after the debate. Time, Newsmax, and Drudge had these polls. He wins by like 58 points. Uh, Fiorina comes in second at 15 in, in one of these polls. What is it about this man? I mean, he clearly was not well prepared for this debate. Right. The foreign policy stuff kind of fell through his hands, but he held his own. He seems to survive, and the audience doesn't care. He, uh, he doesn't have any direct answers. He doesn't have any policy constructs. He says he's going to fix it, and I've uh, done it before. I've cut deals. Yeah. And that's good enough. He's willing to poke the man in the eye, so to speak, to poke the establishment in the eye. It speaks to the great disaffection in the country, how people do want to see something more constructive, how the deep cynicism toward Congress, toward the White House, toward the government in general is spilling over into deep anger and a desire to have anyone from the outside, someone who's proved his success, ironically, from the very class, the Wall Street cartel, if mm -hmm. you will, mm -hmm. that people actually are mad about. But he said, I beat them, too. So I think this is his deep appeal. On the left, the Bernie Sanders effect is actually tapping into a similar vein. Yeah. Uh, I, I want you to see this. This is um, Carly Fiorina, who is Obviously, so many have crowned her the winner of the debate, including Tim Carney. Uh, Me this, too. This, oh, you too. I'm in. All right, Congressman Fortenberry, <laughs> another Fiorina fan. Uh, this is when she, Donald. She was asked about Donald Trump's comments about her face. This is how Miss Fiorina responded. Mr. Trump said that he heard Mr. Bush very clearly, and what Mr. Bush said. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. Do you foresee a change in her numbers, given that response and others like it? Again, I think she's going to be in the top four, certainly maybe the top three or top two of the polls. Mm -hmm. She just she knows how to battle Trump, and that's what people are looking for, someone who can battle probably Hillary Clinton or, you know, conceivably a Joe Biden or something. You remember four years ago you had Joe Biden sort of beat Paul Ryan in a debate just by kind of being a bully. Trump goes out there, plays the same clownish bully role. Jeb can't stand up to it. Carly does. So I think that what people are looking for, a fighter, I think she comes out looking very good. The passion with which she spoke on abortion, she moved people. I know people, mm -hmm. men who started crying when they were watching her talk. Yeah, we're so. going to play that in a minute. That was a pivotal moment. Who surprised you most in this debate? Well, I have a little bit of a bias. I was hoping Carly would do well. I think she's strong. I think she's principled. I was hoping she would be clear. And she was a rifle shot last night. And. Uh, I think, I, honestly, that was a pleasant surprise. I didn't know if that would be the outcome, but it certainly was. Yeah. Are you supporting her formally? 
Well, I'm about this close, Raymond. I'll tell you, I called her six months ago because she impressed me in her Senate run in, in, uh, out mm -hmm. in California that she lost. And I'll tell you what I told her. I said, Carly, I know your story from going from secretary to CEO, but you know what? In California, you said openly you were pro-life. She said, Jeff, you don't say that back there unless you mean it. And that, that's impressive. And she's willing to stand up for it, but, but to package it in an inviting way. She has credibility and authority on the question. One of the other great winners of breakout performances was Chris Christie, Governor Chris Christie yesterday. Uh, this is what he had to say, and it was one of his many standout moments, uh, including this one, when he had had enough of the Trump Fiorina food fight. Watch. So I only say this, she can't run any of my companies, that I can tell you. Why should we trust you Mr. to Charlie, manage why? the finances of this nation I tell you, any differently than you manage running, the finances Charlie, of your casinos? Charlie. While I'm as entertained as anyone by this personal back and forth about the history of Donald and Carly's career, for the 55-year-old construction worker out in that audience tonight who doesn't have a job, who can't fund his child's education, i got to tell you the truth, they could care less about your careers. They care about their... What did you think? So Christie is, first of all, he's just skilled, impressive man. I always say if you're going to hire your CEO from this from this group, Christie just comes across as smart, as confident, as able to sort of carry himself. Mm -hmm. But second, that issue, it's Rick Santorum is the other one that taps into it. Republicans need to care not just about the, the guy who's going to start his own small business or anything. It's the guy who maybe is unskilled, low-skilled laborer who lost his job mm -hmm. or, or that sort of thing. And Christie saying, let's care about him, talk about him, that's steering the Republican Party, I think, in a direction it needs to go, and Christie does it effectively. Could he feasibly step in? Are we basically looking at, assuming Donald Trump does see a, a, a breakdown in his numbers, as most people in this town believe, I'm not so convinced, but most mm -hmm. people here believe that, who are the men and women left standing who could benefit from Donald Trump's, the, the space he's created politically? Well, I, w I would start with Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz has a lot of the same draw, mm -hmm. where he sort of rails against Washington, can get the sort of populist, you know, grab a pitchfork fervor, but he's an actual elected official. Mm -hmm. Marco Rubio is very impressive in both debates. He's a conservative who also who seems uh, a little more appealing to well, the middle not an outsider. In, in a lot of ways. No, but he did come into Washington as an outsider, beating the Republican mm -hmm. Party in that way. And so those two, and I, I predicted a couple months ago that there was going to be a Christie boom. Now I'm kind of waiting. It, it hasn't happened yet, and mm -hmm. I'm worried. But because he's so effective, I could see him rising, too. Congressman Fortenberry. Well, I think it's solid analysis. Christie very much helped himself last night. He showed up. He was himself. Uh, that's vintage mm -hmm. Christie, and uh, he was impressive. I sent an email to a friend uh, last night and said, I think Carly won. She'll improve. Donald held his own. Trump held his own. Christie moves up. I think uh, Rubio, particularly the command of foreign policy, mm -hmm. did himself uh, some favors. But I think everybody else did well as well, but nobody else moved. But those three definitely did. Yeah. Carson's may have slipped a little. Mm. Uh, defunding Planned Parenthood was addressed throughout this debate. Chris Christie and Carly Fiorina both said it was time for Congress to defund Planned Parenthood. Watch. I've vetoed Planned Parenthood funding now eight times in New Jersey. Since the day I walked in as governor, Planned Parenthood has not been funded in New Jersey. We've stood up, and every one of those vetoes has been sustained. But here's the problem. We're, we're fighting with each other up here. We agree. Let's ask Hillary Clinton. She believes in the systematic murder of children in the womb to preserve but their body parts, Dana, in a way that maximizes their value for sale for profit. It is disgusting, and the American people need to hear it. We shouldn't be fighting with each other. She's the real opponent. Governor, She's the, the real problem. Governor, I dare Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, to watch these tapes. Watch a fully formed fetus on the table, its heart beating, its legs kicking. While someone says we have to keep it alive to harvest its brain. This is about the character of our nation. And if we will not stand up and force President Obama to veto this bill, shame on us. Congressman Fortenberry, is it time for the GOP to attach this to the spending bill, defunding Planned Parenthood, and force the president to veto it and possibly shut down the government? Well, I think uh, you have to separate some issues here. Mm -hmm. If you move Planned Parenthood to the point, par Planned Parenthood debate to the point where it shuts down the government, you potentially use, lose your credibility to actually end up defunding or at least curtailing the organization's influence, and that's the dilemma here. There is robust 
consideration, like I've never seen before, and the, people should be encouraged by this in the halls of Congress, as to how to smartly get to this point where taxpayers do not have to fund this organization that was founded in racism, profits from the pain of abortion, now unconscionably is trafficking in unborn baby body parts. There is unanimity of agreement that they shouldn't at least be doing that, but the vast majority of us believe this organization should not receive tax. Okay, but funding. those two presidential candidates clearly are on the side of shut down the government if you have to to defund this. Call the foul, create the moment. Wise or no? What you'll end up doing is Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood funding will continue through Medicaid because it's on autopilot. Mm -hmm. You'll only reduce a portion of it. You'll have a shutdown that begins to hurt people and you'll undermine the credibility of the institution mm -hmm. and that won't get us anywhere. So that's the part of the problem here. But it doesn't mean that this is a one-time strategy. I had this conversation with some of the leadership just a little bit ago. This is a long-term strategy to incrementally move us away from this funding. The states ought to be empowered, by the way. They'll be penalized by the federal government now if they try to stop Planned Parenthood funding. Perhaps that's something that we could do to mm -hmm. give the states that authority. Tim Carney, uh, we heard from Mitch McConnell, the, the leader in the Senate. He said this is an exercise in futility, trying to defund Planned Parenthood. The president will never sign it. Forget it. Is that, is that a wise strategy, given the discontent among GOP voters mm -hmm. and they're running to a guy like Donald Trump? It's it's defeatist. As, as a sort of political analysis, if Mitch McConnell had my job and he said that, there, there's an element of truth to that. It is the single most important thing to Democrats is preserving funding and sort of the legitimacy for abortion, basically. Mm -hmm. that, that, is their, that is their sort of holy grail there. Is that, that's where Obama draws the line. He would never do that. I mean, he, he would take gigantic spending cuts and everything else before he would allow you to take money away from sort of the the Heart, the beating heart of the of the Democratic Party there, mm -hmm. but as far as uh, a leadership strategy, it is fairly typical of the Republicans in recent years to sort of negotiate sort of against themselves. To start off by saying we just can't win, and so what, what are we going to do? Can I add something? It is no. absolutely defeatist to suggest that well we're going to wave the white flag before even we, we even start on this. Mm -hmm. it, it it is the wrong signal to send to people who are right who deeply feel that their tax dollars should not be going to an organization like Planned Parenthood, that the government shouldn't be involved in the procurement of abortion, much less be entangled in this uh, sale of unborn baby body parts. Absolute defeatist, poor political strategy. That's what's causing turmoil on the inside of the GOP. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us, we know that this is a clear principle. And while we might have to have a long-term strategy for the ultimate victory here, Giving up in the beginning is not the answer. But these amendments on the table, Diane Blacks, Trent Franks, these, uh, I mean, they aren't really going to go anywhere, are they? Well, we'll pass them out of the House. Uh, we're trying yeah, they'll to die in the Senate. They'll die in the Senate. We're trying to pressure the Senate to get rid of its 60 rule vote. But then we have potential spending bills in which we can fund, where we can attach various measures that will start to pull the financial strings away from Planned Parenthood and see how far we get. You supported a resolution to identify ISIS's atrocities against Christians as a genocide. What does that achieve, that resolution? Pope Francis has called this a scandal of silence. Uh, Christians are dying, they're being murdered, beheaded, raped. There is a mass exodus from the region. Christians and other religious minorities who make up the fabric of that ancient land have as much right to be there as anyone else. Recently, the Holy Father, there were several of us in the gathering with the Holy Father, was given a cross. And that cross came from a young man, a young Syrian, who was captured by the jihadist. And he said, they told him, now is your choice, convert or die. And he chose, he chose for Christ, and he was beheaded. His mother was able to recover his body and she took that cross and she fled to Austria and was given asylum and that cross made its hands into the hands of the Holy Father just a few weeks ago. The genocide of the Christians is what he has called it and in doing so we hope to elevate the consciousness of the entire international community. And words do mean things. The mere fact that we've said this, it's been translated already into Arabic into the public mediums in Iraq as well as Kurdistan. It's my understanding the president of Kurdistan saw this and was moved by it. We got a note from the bishop of Erbil, some communication from him saying, mm -hmm. this gives us some hope. People there are barely hanging on. Mm -hmm. And it serves as a gateway for the deeper policy debates as to how we attack the un injustice 
and the gravity of the situation. I have only two minutes. Uh, give me a sense. You were with the Holy Father with other Catholic legislators in Rome yes. recently. What do you expect to hear from him when he addresses Congress, that joint session? Well, of course, we, we don't know. And it'll, mm. in, in knowing the Holy Father, it, 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 may, uh, it may be different than we all predict. A lot of surprises. A lot of Hope surprises. Of surprises. <laughs> uh, one of the things that perhaps he'll talk about is the issue of religious liberty, which of course has been a deep debate. We've talked about it here, particularly since the advent of the health care bill, which is forcing many Americans of religious tradition as well as who have deep ethical sensibilities about not providing, for instance, abortion producing drugs in their health care plan to violate these deeply held beliefs. Mm -hmm. We've had lawsuits, uh, Hobby Lobby was one, the Little Sisters of the Poor now suing the Supreme Court. So this is an ongoing debate. I think religious liberty hopefully erases it. I think he will nest all of his comments. It's my guess, I don't have any inside information, into what he said in the recent encyclical. Mm -hmm. Talking about human ecology, that we shouldn't have a throwaway culture. We should think of ourselves as interdependent. Mm -hmm. Nothing, no person should be thrown away. Not the unborn child, not the elderly, not the migrant. Congressman Fortenberry, Tim Carney, thank you both for being here. Pleasure to be with you. We'll be back soon.